Hi, this is Piyush Bhargava, and I have an interesting case to share with you. We are looking at multiple images from a patient with history of osteosarcoma. Let's start by reviewing the whole body rotating image. So this patient had a sodium fluoride PET CT scan, and on this rotating image, uh, we find multiple foci of increased uptake. Um, this patient's primary was in the right proximal fibula. It was an osteosarcoma that was resected, and now they have multiple bone mets which are seen here on the images on the right. There is involvement of the left mandibular head, left side of the L1 vertebral body, a focus in the left sacrum, and a focus in the left pubis. And all of these foci of increased uptake corresponding to, correspond to sclerosis seen on the CT in the bone window. So this patient has sclerotic bone mets that are lighting up on sodium fluoride PET CT scan. Bone mets go to active bone marrow and the appearance of active bone marrow changes with age. Here is a diagram showing the evolution of active marrow from a child to an adult. Also, if you notice here in the fetal stage, it's a yolk sac which is involved in hematopoiesis and soon after that, it's the liver and spleen that take up that function, followed by the axial and the appendicular skeleton and compare this to the adult where the active marrow or active hematopoiesis is only in the axial skeleton and not in the appendicular skeleton. There are times when a patient is anemic, so there is bone marrow redistribution, and that's when the appendicular skeleton also has active marrow, and in that situation, there can be bone metastases to the appendicular skeleton, but typically in an adult, it's only the axial skeleton, and in a child, um, let's say, bone metastases from a neuroblastoma, you would find them in appendicular skeleton as well. Let's look at an example. Here is another patient with history of RCC, renal cell carcinoma, and we are looking at images from a sodium fluoride PET CT, and you can find here that we see faint activity in one of the kidneys, but the other kidney is absent because it has been removed um, for their RCC, and there are multiple foci of increased uptake that are consistent with um, bone metastases. And notice that here, in this patient, there's a large lytic lesion involved in the calcaneus on the right side, and it shows intense linear uptake at the site of active bone turnover where the VC sodium fluoride uptake. So this is a very rare case of calcaneal metastasis from a renal cell carcinoma, and that happened because this patient was anemic and there was active marrow um, up to the level of the calcaneus. Now, bone metastasis can go to the cortical bone as well, but that happens very rarely because cortical bone has very less blood supply compared to the active marrow. Let's look at another case. This is a patient with history of breast cancer, and we are looking at a whole body um, scan from this patient's FDG PET CT study. So here we see that there is increased uptake in the axial skeleton and also involving the proximal aspect of the femur and the humerus. And on the right, we have a transaxial fused PET CT image and the CT in the bone windows showing that there are sclerotic foci that are hypermetabolic. So this patient has extensive bone metastases which are sclerotic in nature uh, and they are hypermetabolic. So lytic bone metastases are typically from thyroid and thyroid cancer and renal cell cancer. Sclerotic metastases are predominantly from prostate cancer and transitional cell cancer. Mixed lytic and sclerotic metastases are typically from breast and lung cancer. Thank you for watching.